Hello, Jessica Bockler here from the Aleph Trust and today I'm in conversation with Dr. Regina Hess. Uh, Regina is a clinical and transpersonal psychologist and a body-centered gestalt psychotherapist from Germany and she's joining the Aleph Trust this year delivering a new course um, which I'm very excited about personally uh, exploring the nature of trauma, the multidimensionality of trauma and its transformation. And just to frame our conversation, I want to say a few words. So trauma transformation to me really, and also collective healing, feel like the one of the most processing, pre pressing concerns of our time. Um, if you look at the past and the present of the human species, it's filled with war, with conflict and, and violence. And in the 20th century alone, humans committed atrocities on unprecedented scales. And today with the, with the rise uh, of new forms of nationalism and authoritarianism, we're really facing rising global turmoil whilst our instruments of collective action, like the UN Security Council, for example, or our instruments of collective accountability really seem paralyzed or seem ignored by many countries and their leaders. And additionally, as a species, we seem very dissociated from our deeper human nature, which is rooted in nature at large as humans were part of the, the wider ecosystems of Earth. Our body is an extension of the Earth body and we're made from the Earth. Yet our behavior and our collective systems that we have evolved, conquering nature and commodifying nature, really suggest that we have failed to understand our deeper being. And this really with devastating consequences. So, Regina, I'd, I'd like to put some questions to you to explore the nature of trauma and its transformation um, how, and how we should engage with these huge challenges that lie before us. And perhaps we could start with the individual healing journey and what pathways and resources can help us to heal individually. First of all, Jessica, thank you very much for this invitation and this opportunity to discuss some content of this course. I'm very much looking forward to, to work with Aleph Trust and the students now. Regarding your question of individual trauma, it's first of all, it's very difficult to talk about trauma in general because trauma can be so different. There are so many impact variables that can be so different. So for example, the severity of the trauma, the impact of the trauma, of course, in what age it happened or if there are several occasions um, and what are the reactions on a psychological and physical level, what kind of violence experience was it uh, physical sexual or emotional abuse so it's very difficult on the one hand uh, to talk in general about it so all these factors would be screened in clinical interviews in clinical diagnostic diagnostic uh, beforehand and also to see of course the, the stability of the personality structure will be kind of the key to how we can work in individual therapy but also of course will be a key for the prognosis of, of the potential of healing and transformation for example uh, the resiliency is a strong impact factor if there was for example beforehand already an experience that was this person was able to resolve to some extent a feeling of empowerment. If, if I have an adversity experience, I'm able to manage or I, I have factors that can help me. So that's usually very good prognosis. Or on the other hand, if not, if there is adverse experience and it just comes on top of another adverse experience, usually that's called vulnerability or risk factors. So um, if people already are traumatized, and usually this is then early childhood trauma. If later trauma builds on early childhood trauma, the risk factors are just much higher. But again, it will depend on resiliency factors, how people were able to manage. That would be like a short answer on the diagnostic side, then on the therapeutic side. Of course, first of all, um, we will have a long period of developing a therapeutic client relationship to really make build a safe relationship. That's the most important thing after trauma. There needs to be a safe space 
that appear that a client can learn to open up and there needs to be a very strong safe uh, relationship in the therapy and then the first step will be more like diagnostic uh, anamnesis and um, practical tools for stabilization so at least before i start any kind of deeper work i will always teach some simple um, body techniques for relaxation some techniques for grounding especially very important because the biggest issue is dissociation in trauma so when the client will dissociate uh, like from certain triggers of the trauma so they go back to the past triggered by this experience and of course in dissociation no transformation or healing is possible so what I always say in the very beginning our core work is to work on dissociation how you how you can learn other possibilities in order to be able to heal because the dissociation reaction will keep you stagnation stagnated in the trauma experience yes and as i'm listening to you speaking there um for me what surfaces is this sense of this frozenness that things are stuck in the body frozen in the body mind body mind spirit the whole of us <laughs> energy caught up and frozen in a, in a past moment. Could you speak a little more to that and, and how you work with the body in releasing that energy? Yeah, I means there are the two extreme uh, emergency reactions that would be the freeze. I freeze, I go numb, I cannot feel anything anymore in order to survive, especially to feel em not the emotions are happening. And the other reaction would be the flight, being hyper uh, hyper aroused all the time, like always in in a in a position of on the run. I need to be able to run if something has uh, happens. And in both states, we are, cannot be in the present moment. So it's basically this window between the two, where only healing or transformation can be possible. So really, there's a, a lot of work on. Um, analyzing triggers of trauma that the client can learn or oh, these are certain triggers that will trigger me and what practices usually the client needs to find themselves what really works easily so usually I offer a broad scale of relaxation techniques for the body grounding exercises to be able to move I work a lot with movement because usually movement helps to come out of this kind of uh, um, shock state yeah? and I work a lot of with, with creative uh, practices but also uh, creative practices you easily go very deep very quickly so again it can lead uh, to dissociation so it's more like uh, I call it a dance with dissociation and a lot around this dance it's not like that we just can r get rid of this or, or just heal or transform it but more like live with this state of dissociation and try to re reduce it as much as possible Mm, it, that really resonates with me. Um, I come from the uh, background in performing arts and working with creative arts in mental health contexts and so often there there is this discernment of what creative tool might be best used or what creative practice might be best used in a particular situation with a group or an individual and as you say these practices can also go very deep and um, can lead people to re-traumatize right or, or to um, become too exposed to uh, material that goes very deep and can can set them can cause anxiety so for me there's yeah there's something there about this playful uh, dipping the toes in being in the present moment gently playing with a kind of self-compassionate stance yeah yeah, and so in that way, so the dance works very well, the metaphor of the dance that we dance around the trauma and dance around the dissociation or we dance with the dissociation. And in that way, every session also had the, has these certain parts. First, like a update, a warm up, a, a grounding in the first place, some little breathing movement exercises, then working deeper on some, some content of the trauma and the dissociation, and then bringing the client back again into stabilization and some movement and so forth. So in that way, it develops kind of a circle in itself, like a healing circle in, has every session yeah yeah thank you and, and so from the from the material that i use means i'm a gestalt a traditional gestalt worker so it's always like working closing the gestalt fine
winding circle, closing circles, which helps a lot as a metaphor in the trauma work also. And I draw a lot on narrative therapy, which really shows very strong results. Even for example, before veterans in the US, they have very good results working with narrative therapy, therapy by telling, giving voice to the trauma, what has happened or for example, what did I do? The feeling of guilt and shame, voicing that and having a witness and having a witness in a safe container. So I, I can really confirm that a lot in all kinds of shades of trauma that uh, expressing the trauma and having a good a professional witness can have really power of healing. Mm. That, that's kind of the one side and then a lot of body, body memory work, uh, uh, how to transform body memory or finding good places and difficult places in the body, how to balance this out and always the foundation of mindfulness and compassion. There's also a lot of research confirming the impact of these factors, mindful based uh, stress reduction, for example, and the use of compassion as like a heart opening. I can also confirm that really feel this is a strong um, a good prognosis once the client can reconnect with a feeling of joy in the heart or feeling of, oh, I feel happiness, I feel love, and uh, to be able to build that again. And this telling of stories that you were speaking about, I imagine it's not only verbal, but it's it, it can also be an embodied storytelling. Yeah. I work a lot with performance, also with psychodrama, body-oriented oriented psychodrama. I use mantra singing a lot because often the, the voicing is so blocked that it's not possible to say any word or it's not possible to sing. But I found out that with mantras, just some syllables or just humming, uh, something can help open up this blockage in the throat, not to express, to hold back. And this holding back usually is like a, a really a severe blockage of actually not accepting themselves their trauma. So because the first step for healing for any possibility of transformation is to accept what, what has happened. But first of all, to, to myself, not to anybody, but that I accept, yes, this is what has happened. This is my truth and then take responsibility. I want to come out of this. I don't want to live like this anymore. So I focus very much on acceptance. There's also behavioral approaches, acceptance commitment therapy. I really like these parts of uh, this behavioral approach to say, okay, first of all, I need to help you to accept what has happened to you and then to take commitment and responsibility in order that you can learn how to transform. Mm. Yeah, thank you. I'm wondering if you could also touch a little on the more collective, the transgenerational nature of trauma. Mm -hmm. um, we've covered the, the, the individual, but of course the individual doesn't live in isolation, but is, la is part of the, the larger story, the transgenerational story, and part of the larger body, as I was saying earlier on, the body of Earth. Yeah, means I'm 20 years clinical psychologist, I'm 10, 10 years specialized solely working in trauma specialized approaches, individual, systemic, collective. Uh, so what happened means I'm from Germany, so all my life I was confronted on working with war trauma, working on, you know, transformation of war trauma, um, second, first war, world war experiences. And um, so I developed uh, constellation work, specific constellation work for working with historic and collective experiences. I also integrate in the same way then body work, psychodrama, performative sciences, approaches, narrative approaches. And I really can see uh, amazing results because uh, I worked quite a long time in psychiatry and we always had, of course, combination of individual and group therapy. And then in group therapy, First of all, of course, the power of sharing and hearing, okay, I'm not the only one having this experience, but also really connecting on a collective level of, yes, this is what my parents experienced. This is what my grandparents experienced. Yes, they had exactly, actually, actually post-traumatic stress symptoms, but of course they were not diagnosed with something like that. Yeah? So that's a huge topic. And also what, I, what we see, of course, and there's a lot of research in sexual trauma that it's usually also repetitive uh, and already passed on over, over transgenerational lineages. So this is all my clinical work. It's really a huge topic. And I, since I specialize more in, in transpersonal approaches, I always include this bigger picture of working in an in a ancestral picture. 
and not only on trauma but also on potential what strengths did we get from our ancestors what values positive values did, do we learn from our ancestors also it's very empowering and since then i really see a shift to the solely clinical approach which which is usually only focusing on the symptoms only focusing on this individual story sometimes there's a systemic uh, emphasis to look in the family what does this person do to the family which is great and also important but we cannot stop there i really see the power once the client can connect the dots even much further beyond one family to the collective even to connect it to historical uh, lineages and then the ecological dimensions naturally comes in naturally usually the client themselves arrive but then i need to look also at nature so the bigger picture uh, naturally flows in such a way and since i work like this i, I see much more transformation possible for clients mm. it feels like we're tapping not only into our own stories but into the the larger stories of the earth and seeing through those practices seeing the the larger patterns that are reverberating through through the generations and collectively and, and and the patterns that we're immersed in right now yes as we're um as we're living at this time and day these patterns that are still alive that are still you know even though i mean the second world war is feels like a longer time ago now but nonetheless the the pain from that time and all the suffering the suffering of uh, the uh, you know all the genocides that have happened that suffering is unresolved still so much of it is is unrecognized unseen repressed and it's still expressing itself um on so many levels in families in 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 collective dynamics so it feels so important to address this piece yeah, and yeah. it, in fact it feels like one of the major challenges of our time really in order to facilitate a shift in human consciousness i think so we, we we cannot and this is really kind of what what i'm really teaching right now we cannot stop at the individual level of course when a client is in acute symptomatics of course we need to stabilize and do all the work this is not what i mean but we cannot stop there in more in a on a general population not only on the level of clinical treatment or clinical diagnosis but on a level of consciousness of a general population and what i really learned from the trauma when i boil it down 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 i i come to the level of nature because i i would say right nowadays i would say okay our first primal trauma starts when we started dissociating from nature in the you know moving into the development of our times um, we can go through the history to see where we started splitting more and more of the level of connectedness with nature learning with nature living in a cyclical form how nature develops with all its ups and downs and um, so basically i feel like okay it's, it's uh, really the split of human nature from nature is the core trauma that we all carry in modern times and from this we can develop all the individual little bits and stories but at the end bottom line is not so much different mm, yeah it makes me think of all the natural disasters that are occurring right now you know the fires in australia the um, you know major storms that we have seen it also now makes me think of your story mm -hmm. and the experiences that you have had in in terms of natural disaster and going going through that and how we can tend to um again dissociate and and say that's that's something happening in nature it's nothing to do with us when really the inner and the outer are <laughs> well we're part of the larger earth body I, I'm wondering whether you could speak a little bit about your personal story, mm -hmm. uh, the experience that you have gone through that I just alluded to there in order to shine a deeper light into that deeper connection to the ecological body. Yes, this was absolutely a turning point in my life. 2004, I survived the tsunami in Thailand. I was under war. I was living on the on the beach, and I was just immediately under the way in the wave and uh, could not come up anymore. Could not breathe. So I had a full blown near death experience, a very deep spiritual oneness experience on the one hand, then like a miracle being thrown back onto land and then confronted with the devastation of land and and death death toll of people. 
So that was definitely huge. That was a turning point in my life in to the good. Yeah, I means I was always spiritual. I worked, but I worked in a clinical mainstream um, psychiatric hospital. Always already pretty at the edge uh, to focus on collective healing and so forth. But after the tsunami, this realization came: we are dissociated from nature. Because actually, what the experience that I had in the tsunami was that, as in this oneness experience, I felt connected with the earth, with all elements. I felt connected with the power of the tsunami, and uh, this keeps this stays. It is it never left my body. It is really it is really there. And um, since then, of course, I really then I did my my PhD in transpersonal psychology in USA because of this experience that I really felt okay. Now I really need to work in a transpersonal framework and uh, to support you know the trauma healing on such a expanded level. And since then, this is my love, my work. This is my life's calling to do trauma work in such an expanded way. Mm -hmm. It's very moving to hear you speak about that experience. It took me a long time to like 10 years I did I mean, for several years I did therapy and since 10 years I did like a research study on my my, uh, my own experience a case study and since after 10 years it feels like it's really good it's really settled and integrated I've published articles on it so maybe you, you, you can look it up it's a uh, it's really good for me to talk about it and it's part of my teaching because i think when i talk through this experience and you that the students can understand why i teach in that way and what it really means yeah it also feels like there are two um complementary ways of working that are coming together and meeting here and and they're concerned with on the one hand the, the clinical work, the, the trauma uh, transformation work, and then on the other hand, uh, a kind of activism that, you know, a kind of the, working in the political sphere, in the communal sphere, in order to facilitate changes and shifts that we need so much today. Yeah, that would lead to, to another development in my work. So after that tsunami, I started with my PhD, I started studying very detailed about near-death experiences and research on near-death experiences. That helped me also a lot to, to work. And since then, I have many clients with near-death experiences. But what was stunning for me when I studied about near-death experience, that it was compared very much to psychedelic experiences and to working with dreams. And I work all my life, I'm a Jungian scholar, I work all my life with depth psychological dream analysis. So that was stunning on the first place, I thought, oh, that's my work anyways. With psychedelic science at that time, I had no experience. I was always just yoga, meditation, dance and so forth. And then, but I thought, oh, I'm really interested. And then I really started since 2006, since my PhD, really specializing on a clinical level, on a systematically studying the approaches in psychedelic science on the clinical clinical side and in the indigenous side. But uh, overall, what I would say, what, why I'm really interested also integrating psychedelic science, both indigenous and modern approaches, because again, it connects to our dissociation from nature, because working with altered states is a, is a part of our culture since we, since humanity exists. So again, this, this also connects to a cultural approach to treatment and transformation, but also it connects to this activism, what you just mentioned, to really, so what I really teach is more like a general approach that it is a part of humanity to work with altered states, with or without substances. It's a cultural approach that we have indigenous approaches working with medicine work, which they call medicine work, or modern approaches now also related to trauma. I just would like to mention, of course, the groundbreaking treatment uh, results with MDMA for post-traumatic stress disorder. So, of course, I'm top. I'm on top of all this work, and it comes all together. But when I boil it down, I would say it is really our trauma, is our dissociation from nature. And everything what I teach is connected to that. You know, it feels, it's great that you're mentioning this, the psychedelic renaissance, and it's wonderful to see more research being done again in this area. In the UK, there's a lot happening. It's exciting. Um, and it's also, for me, connected to giving ourselves permission again to be utilizing these broader, wider, more expanded states of consciousness and to be um working in in more in playful ways accessing 
trans states effectively in order to reframe and rephrase our individual story but also our collective stories kind of like a um, yeah a restoring of what we're about as as a human species in relation to the wider planet exactly absolutely so you know in that way it's like it feels like i, I start on, on this level and then i go to like an ecological cosmological level and suddenly everything that i ever once did in my life comes together now you know so i feel like a, it's an integration of integration of integration of trauma what i present in the course you know yeah Thank you so much, Regina, for exploring this topic with me, which is very rich and we could go on further. There's so much depth to it. And uh, as you said, so many different ways to approach it. And well, overall, I, I, you know, I'm making this movement because it feels like we need this kind of integrated approach towards this topic and that is grounded in the whole and not isolating the individual, but really realizing we're, we're part of a much larger body and a much larger story. Mm. Thank you for taking the time. Thank you so much, Jessica. I'm very much looking to forward to your team and to the students especially. It's great to have you on board. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye for now. And just to say to all of you, if you've enjoyed this conversation, please feel free to have a look at the Aleph Trust website. Uh, you'll see our course offer there. And if you're interested in any of the courses that we run, then please do get in touch. Thank you all.